Hey there, welcome to Business Breakthroughs. I'm your host, Neil DiPentino. So glad you could be with us today. Uh, you know, my kids used to come home from school and I'd always ask them, well, you know, what did you learn today? And of course, my smart aleck kids would say, nothing. But we know for sure they're learning something. We wouldn't be sending them to school, right? So, but here's the thing. Maybe we should be asking ourselves that same question. Now, our next guest, um, she's going to tell us why it's important to keep learning. She's also going to give us some steps on uh, some of the steps that we could take to learn. And she's also going to show us some of the results that we could expect. Uh, our guest is the host of the Chain of Learning podcast. She's a strategic, a strategic advisor, keynote speaker, and award-winning author from the San Francisco Bay Area. Please welcome founder of Katie Anderson Consulting. Consulting, Katie Anderson. Katie, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Neil. It's a pleasure to be here to talk with you and your audience here today. Well, fantastic. Man, that was a mouthful. You are yeah. a very accomplished person. You've got all kinds of stuff going on. It, my, the one thing my mom has said is consistent about me is I don't I don't seem to stop. Once I get one, one thing going, I keep putting something else on. So it's the high achiever in me, um, but also it's coupled with the high learner in me, too. So you already mentioned we're going to like focus on that theme of learning today. And those those are two things really linked to me, um, learning and achievement and how how do we show up to really uh, be the people we want to be and have the impact we want as well. Well, you know, I think there's an old saying, it goes something like, if you ain't learning, you ain't living. So I, I might've just made that up. I don't know, but <laughs> I mean, good, really, we, that's, we can yeah, attribute I mean, that to you then. That's, that's a great saying. All right. I'm going to put my mark on that one. That's for doggone sure. So, Hey, we're going to get into the business part of what you do and, and, and all that fun stuff and all the stuff that you're going to uh, be able to share with our audience. But before we do that, we want to kind of get to know Katie. Katie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, I already started off with, you know, the the learner and achiever part. And those have really like coupled with a strong desire to have broad international experiences have really shaped my career. I uh, started off actually in academia. I thought I was going to get my PhD and be a professor. And that led me to moving to Australia and getting a master's degree and ultimately moving back to the United States and starting to work in healthcare and continuous improvement in healthcare. And that was a real career shift for me. And the light bulb of joy went off when I stopped being the one with all the answers and like, you know, I loved that, but really helping create capability in leaders at all different levels to solve important problems and in healthcare at a children's hospital. So, you know, super mission driven. And that has shaped the, the second half of my career of really working in originally in healthcare organizations to help foster these cultures of learning and high performance. And then for the last 10 years, um, I started my business t almost just over 10 years ago to really work with organizations around the world from government to biotech, multinationals, of course, healthcare as well, to help their leaders really create those, those habits that are aligned with fostering learning in our organizations. And so that is what um, brings me the greatest professional and personal joy. And it still allows me to travel around the world, including having lived in Japan and now leading um, executive learning trips to Japan as well. So that's wow, a little, like little teaser you. about me, but yes. <laughs> A little teaser. I got to tell you, I would like to be you. You're living the life, if I, you know, based on what you were just saying. So that's very cool. I love it. Fantastic. And the most important thing, though, is it, it's allowing me to fulfill like my purpose, which is helping connect the hearts and minds of people around the world to make it a better place. And so when we can like actually fulfill our purpose and do the doing, that like what better place to be. Absolutely. 100%. I totally agree. You know, it's interesting. I started this podcast some time ago and uh, I've been in sales and marketing and business for well over 40 years. And, you know, I, I, I really thought that I kind of had it together. I really know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. I know a, a lot more than anybody else on the face of the planet and everything. But then I started this podcast and I started meeting interesting people like you and the other people that have been on the podcast and realized just how little I do know. But I did want learn one thing. And it, that, you know, we all can continue to learn. And uh, I've been learning just all kinds of wonderful things from the different people being on this show. Now, that is your big deal. You basically preach organizational culture of learning. Can you explain mm. what that's all about? Absolutely. And, and what you said is really that is our leadership or our human superpower. It's about learning, knowing that we're, you know, we don't know it all and we'll never know it all. And if we can continue to learn our way forward through mistakes and setbacks, we will ultimately make progress and, and hopefully achieve our goals or something we didn't even know that we were setting out for. And what 
I really try and help organizations and their leaders do is how do we move from this culture of doing of all the time? Like we're, we're busy and active and we're doing all the things, but are we really improving and getting better and accelerating uh, where we need to go to, or actually even creating that innovation and that, or even those daily continuous improvements that are going to make the business better, make it easier for people to do the work and create better value for customers as well. So the secret sauce is in our capability to learn and our ability to slow down and reflect and um, help others do the same thing too. Yeah, I think slowing down is like a big thing. I mean, I know I've, I'm always kind of running from one thing to another. I was on a podcast earlier this morning as a guest. And one of the questions was, if I were a board game, you know, what board game would oh. I be? And the only thing I could think of was Scrabble because my oh, entire yeah. life is like this all over the place, right? But if I do the right things and I start pulling it all together, I come mm. up with some kind of really cool solution. And mm. so that's kind of what I, I guess learning to some extent is all about. And, and you talk about discovering purpose and aligning actions for mm. positive impact with your mm. leaders. So tell me a little bit about that and what that's all about. Yes. Yeah, so that came from uh, this concept of intention. And, you know, actually, uh, for those of you who are watching, you can see some calligraphy in Japanese behind me. And this is the word for intention in in Japanese. And when I moved to Japan, I didn't have business cards. I mean, who, who gives out business cards anymore? But you, you have to, that's part of the ritual of meeting people. And so I, I, and I just started my consulting practice. So I had the word, I asked them to put the word for intention on my business card. And so this is what, that's what it ends up looking like. And, and really they came from symbols, meaning coming from samurai and heart. So the strength of your heart, like your inner purpose, your will, like who you want to be. And then the second symbol means direction. And I, I had this aha six, seven, eight years ago when I was living in Japan, like, oh my gosh, this is like a deeper meaning of intention. Like who do we want to be? What impact we want to have on others? Not just what we want to achieve, and, and then what are the actions or behaviors that really align with creating that impact? And what I've, when in all the leadership coaching and, and consulting that work that I do, and also for myself as well, I, I find that it's not that we don't often have this desire for positive impact to help people improve and grow and um, do things better or feel connected, but it's that the habits that maybe we developed earlier in our career as independent contributors, or we just don't know better don't actually have that impact. And so how do we better align the things we do with the impact that we want to have? And that's, that's really, you know, for what I, what I help leaders do, like showing up and telling everyone what to do. Sometimes we think it's helpful, but actually it often creates disengagement or inhibits people from bringing their ideas forward. So how do we slow down and ask more questions and not always jump in with our ideas? So some examples like that, but that's really, uh, it's it's so simple and basic, and it's so transformative. Well, you talk in your on LinkedIn. I was just checking your LinkedIn and profile. And you talk about the impact of, or, or you talk about purpose driven leadership. So, what mm -hmm. is the impact of of that uh, on a, on an organization on a on a on a leader? Yeah, I was actually just asked this question last night. Like when I work with leadership teams, where do I start? And I always start with purpose. And not we don't start with necessarily the organization's purpose, although we certainly talk about that too. But what is your purpose as a human being and as a leader? Um, and I, I do this exercise where I have people draw, draw their purpose and the things that are important to them. And there's really these like common human elements that about most people have something in there about family, community, the people they work with, something about learning and helping other people grow and achieve, maybe something that gives them joy, you know, something they like to do. But these really common themes around the world. And if we can like remember that, like our humanity side, then we can be more like purpose connected to that purpose as well at work. So how does our, how we show up as leaders, what we're doing in our work environment also connect with that, um, that individual human purpose. And I've had a, some leaders say to me, oh my gosh, I see that like, I'm getting so focused on like the results and the outcomes, which of course you need at work, but forgetting that those other core elements of who they are and who they want to be. And it's just like this aha element. So if we can start with purpose and then also talk about the company's purpose, then we can align on how we're going to achieve the goals and the results and all of that so much more effectively. But, you know, I've always I come from a position of sales. I've been in sales and marketing pretty much my entire career. And the one thing that I've always been, I've been taught and I've always lived by is, you know, you don't sell the product before you sell yourself. And yeah. it kind of sounds like that's kind of what you're getting at a little bit there. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is yes, it's the same the same thing. Like, let's let's start with like the. 
the human, the human element and the, that connection and the, and like we're solving real problems and we're like helping each other and we get back to that element, then it's like, well, what are the things that are going to do that? And how's the thing that you're selling going to be of benefit or value um, to that person as well? Fantastic. So now you're, you're, you're talking about impact or I'm sorry, the uh, purpose driven uh, leadership, that type of thing. Can you give us some examples of how maybe you go about working with a specific client and maybe what some of the results, can you give us, you know, some real life stuff? Uh, uh, yeah. So, I was just interviewing one of um, my long-term clients. I just interviewed him for my own podcast, Chain of Learning, because he's such this amazing example of the impact it can have when you can shift. I mean, he was always a great purpose-driven leader, but he made this realization that he was like focusing on the tools and the process improvement, and that if he could really focus on how, and he he was he had been in a like sort of continuous improvement, operational excellence leadership role for years, but had for like a period of six to eight months was assigned to lead this large team within the organization because they had a management gap. So he didn't know, you know, he didn't know the group. He didn't know the work they did. And he's like, I'm going to focus on doing all the things that I've learned from you and, and, and teaching other leaders, which is to go get clear with the team on sort of the direction that the organization's going and then ask them a lot of questions about what they think they can do to contribute and what are the their, their internal goals that will help contribute to that broader goal and giving them a little space for learning and experimentation. And, you know, in a three month period, he said he saw like great improvements, not only in their capability and he had to be okay with letting them learn. They were actually making, you know, they were getting better and the team was super engaged and his boss, who is the site leader came over to him and he said, what are you doing with this team? Like you're getting great results and like, everyone's super engaged and like other managers were coming up saying, Oh, I want to do what Sean's doing. He's like, what are you doing? And he said, Oh, it's just so simple. I'm like getting clear on where we need to go and I'm showing up and I'm asking questions and I'm listening and I'm going to actually talk with them. And it's like this simple superpower. And like, so if we can really get, make that shift, we can actually get better results through engaging people and like stopping being the one, you know, coming in and just being saying, oh, I have all these answers or I have these ideas and letting go of this sort of myth that as leaders, you know, le that leadership equates with being the person with the answers and like, oh, I need to show my strength and tell them what I'm, you know, what I think. Actually, it's the reverse. You need to set the direction and then your strength is in like being quiet and giving people space and support. Um, so that's one example. It was really great to hear that story. And um, and that's like kind of grown the culture at that organization as well. And then, you know, what I, I think back to the some of the healthcare companies that I've worked in and with as well, it's just like, how do we break down those silos? Because we get very focused, right, in the work that we're doing or individuals. And And this is actually an example of when I was still working internally my, one of my last internal roles at a, a children's hospital, but it's very similar to the work that I do, you know, today as an external consultant as well, but bringing multidisciplinary groups together and to walk a process together and to see the connections and how pieces of work and steps actually, actually relate. And so there was this huge problem that had been plaguing the pediatric cancer center for years, like patients and their parents who had, you know, the kids who had cancer coming in multiple times a week were waiting like, and this is, you know, for infusions or chemotherapy, we're waiting up to like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six hours and totally unpredictable and they, you know, the nurse practitioners had tried some improvement. The doctors had tried some improvement all these little pieces. But when we were able to finally bring them together and to map out the whole process and to see what other people's work was, was happening, it was like so transformative. I mean, we didn't solve, solve all the waiting, but we vastly reduced it and made the process so much better, not only for the people doing the work, but also for the patients. And so, you know, if we can actually go to the work where the work's happening where we can get out of our silos and where we can ask more questions and really understand what's happening, not what we think is happening. That is where the transformation happens. I love that. You can't uh, solve a problem until you know what the problem is. And so that yeah. is where asking questions really comes in. Um, and it's all about communication. I've had several conversations with people on this show and outside of this show uh, about, you know, communication skills and the one thing that you you brought up was, especially with the first example, is like you know getting uh, the staff, the team, to kind of um, you know collaborate, and, and where the leader was not just actually you know 
bossing people around and telling them exactly what they had to do and what the commitment's going to be and what the results are going to be. He was asking those people to provide them with some, provide some yeah. solutions. And by bo- doing that, you really get them to buy into the whole process and you have a much better employee as, as well. Would you agree? And absolutely. Like the way to improve engagement is, you know, by improve, en- engaging people in improvement. So like we, you know, I love, it's that, that same, you know, we try and do all these external things, but if we actually invite people to contribute their ideas and give them the, con- you know, the structures and conditions that will allow their ideas to be tested or tried, or, you know, sometimes things are off limits, but, you know, for the most part, if we allow them to bring forward their ideas, we're so, we see so much better, better results. And we unburden ourselves with that responsibility. Like you put on the bag, like the heavy bag of like, I have so much stuff to do. I actually wrote about this in industry week about like, we need to unburden the unburdened leadership is about feeling like you don't have to have all the answers. Cause then you take on all that responsibility too. So how do we, how do we get out of that trap? And then we don't feel like we have time to ask questions because we have so much right. to do. And so it becomes this like vicious cycle. So mm-hmm. how do we slow down, ask more questions and unburden ourselves with the responsibility of the doing of everything? And now they have a new role and they're trying to prove themselves in that role. They've already mm. proved themselves in the other role. Now they're trying to prove themselves that role. And, and, and leaders sometimes have a tendency to have, you know, big egos. I mean, you, you have to admit that, right? So the question I have is how do you get them to buy into your system, into your program? Yeah. I mean, well, it's the very same thing This Sean, this example, he was like, he was on the executive team and then asked to pinch hit for a few, you know, half a year. And he could have just come in and been like, I have a lot of ideas from my past, you know, role and I got to show my strength that I know what I'm doing. But he like withheld on that natural instinct to do that. So, you know, but how I help leaders do that is really the very same thing we started the conversation about. It is like, what's your purpose? Like what impact do you want to have? And then we start to explore how maybe being that one coming in, give, telling everything, having, help, helping them reflect on, well, what are they seeing happens as a result, you know? Um, and so some of that, some of that guiding and, and sort of teaching and reflection. And then ideally, you know, that person has a coach, if it's either me or someone else or someone internal, helping them practice and try on some different behaviors too. But they have to first have that willingness to see that there's an opportunity for improvement. You know, if you don't come fo- t- come to the table seeing that you that all of us have opportunities for improvement. I like to say, you know, as leaders, we we too are business conditions that require improvement because h- how we perf- how we show up impacts the results that we see. But if you're not willing to do that, then, you know, th- th- there's no there's no point in sort of trying to make that person uh, be different. But if they even can see that there's an opportunity for for I guess a different uh, a different way of being then even though they don't even though they may not totally know what that is then then that's the space where we can move forward yeah, and they may not know what it is right now, but they'll be able to determine that as they go forward, I would imagine. Yeah. I want to ask yeah. you about, I was looking at, again at your LinkedIn, you talk about break, it, break the telling habit. Mm. Okay, can yes. you tell us about that a little bit? You got a big smile well, on your face. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I was talking about. So I have to admit, my name is Katie Anderson, and I have a telling habit. And I have to work each and every day so hard to break it. Well, actually, never really break a habit, but you have to strengthen other habits so they come forward. And, you know, about 12 years ago, I had this like horrifying realization from a coach that I'd hired in. This is in one of my last leadership roles in an organization. And she's, you know, after following me for a day, she's like, Katie, you think you're, <laughs> you're you think you're being this great coach. And like, you are, I can really tell you have the heart, but like in so many meetings, you were like jumping in with enthusiasm, but like given all your ideas or you're interrupting people because you're trying to like get your idea in there. And she's like, I just see people shutting down. And I was like, oh my God. That's like the last thing I want to do. And, you know, so this is that telling habit. We have this habit of showing up as the expert, the one with the answers. We want to provide helpful suggestions because we've seen it before. Uh, but we all have that friend, right? When you have a problem and you're like, or something that's on your mind, you have to be prepared for them to give you all of their great ideas of what you should and should do, you know, do this, do that, do that. It's the same thing that happens in the work, that feeling of like, ah, 
So we have to break that telling habit and show up with more inquiry and holding more space for other people to think. And absolutely, there's time and place to be telling. Like certainly if there's, you know, we set that direction, the clarity of, you know, roles or, you know, outcomes or, you know, expectations, or if there's something dangerous happening, or if you have a piece of information that's really helpful for someone, but it's, it's when we show up every day with this like telling, 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 we're just not actually inviting other people's thinking into the equation. Uh, a thing, I mean, that you were already kind of talking about it, but uh, you know, that is so cool. I love that. I'm going to use that from now on. Absolutely. Cause I think I kind of fall in that, you know, cause I like to come in sometimes and I, I tell my stuff, this is what I need. This is what I want you to do, blah, 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 yes. blah, 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 where, you know, I should probably be a little bit more, I guess, attentive to what they're looking at and what their needs are and, and, and maybe collaborate a little bit more. So, I mean, I think we're all kind of guilty of that. So I, I love that. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, Absolutely. And it's telling is, is not that one's right or wrong. It's just that we have this over practice or over, you know, over expression of telling. Right. So it's just knowing the impact of telling versus asking and what's the right way to be in that situation and for the outcome that you're looking for. Very cool. Or they're looking for. I love that. Before we, we're getting close to the end here, but we can't get away from here without talking a little bit about the Chain of Learning podcast. Tell us about that. Yeah. Thanks, Neil. I am super excited. Earlier this uh year. Well, we were recording at the end of 2023, but so November of 2023, I finally made the plunge to start an intentional podcast. I've been dabbling for years doing interviews and putting up my YouTube channel. And earlier in 2023, I put up, um, you know, the audio too, because people are more on the go, but I decided, you know, embodying my, my phrase intention, like let's be purposeful about this and, um, and help, leaders and their organizations really foster this um, chain of learning of how we create learning, how we build together, this concept of chain of learnings, we're all learners and leaders together. And it's through helping each other learn that we really create this learning organization, which is the chain as well. So it's been exciting. I've had guests like Carol Dweck on the show who wrote um, Mindset, you know, about the growth mindset, um, some leaders at GE and more. So we're just getting launched. I have like seven episodes now. So it's super exciting. And I look forward to your listeners tuning in as well. Fantastic. And we'll actually tell people how they can find the show on our show notes uh, when we get to the end of, the, of this program. Uh, look, Great. we are at the end. Uh, any final thoughts you'd like to leave our audience with? Yeah, you know, the, we're recording this at the end of the year. And, you know, we always talk about like New Year's resolutions and all the goals we need to achieve. And I challenge you all to think about, go back to that concept of intention. What's the impact you want to have and on others? And start with that. Like, who do you want to be? And how are your actions aligning or not aligning with that? And then how are your goals aligning or not aligning with that? So if we can really start with that purpose, it'll help us be more effective in showing up to be the person we want to be, the impact we want to have, and actually help us have the, the strength and fortitude to really achieve the important goals in our life. So reflect on intention and then move into goals. And you can learn more on my, I, that was actually the upcoming po episode on my podcast, Chain of Learning. So Fantastic. check that out. So Katie, if our, our audience would like to get in contact with you to find more out about yourself and about your business, how they go about doing that. Yeah, so my website is uh, KBJ Anderson with an O-N, KBJ Anderson uh, dot com. Also, I am on LinkedIn and well, I'm, I'm on Twitter, but only not as much as I used to be. But Twi LinkedIn's my social media platform of choice. So you can find me there too, Katie Anderson or slash KBJ Anderson. My podcast is Chain of Learning and my best selling book is Learning to Lead leading to learn. So Ooh. some great lessons in there from uh, a 40 year Toyota leader and the relationship we developed over the time that I lived in Japan. So Incredible. a little that's, teaser for that book. Too. That's wonderful. I love it. We should have got into that a little bit more. Maybe next time we will, yeah, but we'll have time. some of that information yeah. on our show notes for sure. So, Hey, listen, thank you so much for being a guest on our show today. You were wonderful. And I really appreciate you being here. Thanks, Neil. Thanks so much. You betcha. Hey, that's all we have for today, folks. So thrilled that you could be with us. Business Breakthroughs is sponsored by Titan Media Works. Check us out at titanmediaworks.com. Uh, that's work spelled W-O-R-X. And also check out all of our other great hosts on the Small Business Delivered Network at smallbusinessdelivered.com. Until next time, have a great day. We look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.